This is Belgium. It's where you'll find the headquarters of the European Union. It's given us some of the best chocolate and beer that money can buy. And until recently, it was home to the world's highest ranked national football team. Not bad for a country with less than 12 million people. In other words, it's defied its modest size to become a front-runner in lots of different areas. And very soon, it's going to lead the way again, but in something that's never been done before. We're talking about a new type of infrastructure that's going to transform how energy is distributed across Europe. This is how Belgium is building the world's first energy island. Now, hold on a second. If you've been a follower of Tomorrow's Build since the beginning, then you might be getting a little sense of deja vu. What did you just say? Nothing, just a little deja vu. Don't worry, this isn't a glitch in the Matrix. We have brought up the subject of energy islands before. Denmark has been gearing up to build two of them for years now, and we did a video on that back in 2021. But things have moved on a bit since then. It seems their North Sea neighbours are about to get there first, thanks in part to a construction method that's extremely clever. We're going to come to that in a bit, but for the benefit of those who didn't see the first video, or if you could do with a bit of a recap, what exactly is an energy island? Well, it's a new type of artificial island that's built far offshore, in this case 45 kilometres away from the Belgian coast, and equipped with high voltage electrical infrastructure. It enables power generated by nearby wind farms to be sent not just back to shore, but onto other hubs and countries in the region. They essentially help create an interconnected electricity grid when more of them are built. You see, the EU in particular has big plans for offshore wind. Yes, it currently only has around 16 gigawatts of installed capacity at the moment, but it wants to get to 300 gigawatts by 2050. If or when this does happen, energy islands are going to be an important part of making sure all that power gets back to land efficiently, and this is what the first ever one is going to look like. The Princess Elizabeth Island, which we think is named after the daughter of Belgium's King Felipe, will be the size of about 12 football pitches. It'll be made from concrete caissons filled with sand. There'll also be a small harbour and helipad, so people such as maintenance crews can actually get there. Construction is set to begin in early 2024, and things will take around two and a half years to complete. But before we get into how Belgium is actually building this island, I want to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Now this job has taken me all over to see how the amazing construction industry is quite literally shaping our worlds, including right here to New York City. But being a YouTuber means I do a lot of work from cafes and hotel rooms, and that's where Surfshark comes in. It's a VPN that protects your personal data by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. It means I can connect to free hotel Wi-Fi like this without worrying about hackers or big companies getting my personal data. And because Surfshark swaps the real location of your device with a new one, you can access shows on Netflix and other streaming services that aren't available where you are. If you sign up now, Tomorrow's Builds viewers can get an extra three months for free. Just use the code TOMORROW. Surfshark offers a free 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to trying it out. Just follow the link in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. So, what does it take to build something like this in the middle of the sea, especially when electricity and water don't usually go well together? First of all, let's start with those caissons, which are going to be prefabricated on land. The factory will have a construction lane that puts together these giant building blocks in five stages, from the base slab to the walls and the roof. Once the concrete is cured, they'll be carried off for temporary storage until they're ready to be taken away for offshore installation. Meanwhile, pre-construction dredging gets underway at the site location before another ship lays the foundations for the caissons to lie on around the perimeter of the island. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That boat there really is called Simon. It gets its name from Simon Stevin, you know, the Belgian mathematician who invented the decimal point. Okay, granted, we had to go and look that up. Anyway, after Simon has finished prepping the seabed, those caissons are transported over by tugboat and lowered, starting at the south side of the island. Anchors and winches are used to position the caissons, which are ballasted with water to keep them stable. 
When they've all been placed, a dredger begins pumping sand into what will become the interior of the island until around half of it is filled. The sand is compacted before a concrete batching plant is installed on the island, while more sand continues to be pumped in at the other end. Next, rocks are brought in by boat to create the boundary for the harbour. A high concrete wall will then be built on top of the caissons to protect the island from strong waves, wind and flooding. Then it's time to pack down that concrete plant along with all the other construction equipment to make way for the electrical installation works. The island is being built by Elia Group, one of Europe's leading electricity transmission companies, with design and construction carried out by a consortium called TM Edison. When finished, it will unleash the potential of a new offshore wind zone being planned for this part of the North Sea. It'll have a capacity of 3.5 gigawatts, enough to power about 3.5 million homes. There's also plans to use it as a sort of node for building new undersea connections with both the UK and Denmark. Ah, yes, Denmark. Their energy island project is still going ahead, but it looks like it's going to take a few years longer. More like 2030. But it's important to remember that this isn't really a race. It's not all about being first. The whole point is they'll ultimately end up being used to share renewable energy between countries, helping everyone move away from fossil fuels. That only works if nations work together rather than compete with each other. It's why Belgium and Denmark have signed an agreement to connect their energy islands when they're all up and running. This could reduce their CO2 emissions by 4 megatons each year. Germany and the Netherlands are looking into their own energy islands too, which could become operational in the early 2030s. If all of these schemes go to plan, then in just one decade's time, Europe will have taken a huge step towards a fully interconnected power grid, at least between the countries around the North Sea. And who knows, it could even inspire nations from further afield to take a similar approach in the future. Finding new and effective ways to spread renewable energy as far and wide as possible should really involve everyone. This video was made possible by Surfshark, you can learn more about that at the link below. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you're subscribed to Tomorrow's Build.